Hi, welcome to Exploring Illusion Free Will. My name is George Ortega. I'm here with my co-host, Anel. Anel, how you doing? Okay. Now, today is episode number 94, Free Will, What Sam Harris Gets Right and Wrong, Part 1. I think we're going to have two parts on this. I don't think we're going to get through this entire thing in this show. And basically, it's about Sam Harris's book, Free Will. Okay, it was published March uh, 3rd, 2012. Um, Sam Harris is like a three-time best-selling New York Times author. He wrote The Moral Landscape, The End of Faith. You know, he's a really excellent writer. Okay, um, before we get into this, though, I just want to go, as we do every show, what we mean when we say we have free will and why this show, why this whole topic, this whole, you know, basically renaissance, this, this new enlightenment is so important to, to the world. Okay, Nick. So and now, so why? I don't know. Why do we? I have two names. Why do we have? Um, what? What? What is free will? Yes. Free will is the belief that you have the ability to make decisions independent of your conditioning and genetics. Completely impossible. Okay. Another way that you can understand free will. Free will means that like we could have done otherwise from what we did. Again, completely impossible because the, the only way we could have done otherwise was if the universe, or if we were otherwise, and we weren't, so we couldn't have. Um, you wouldn't have any regrets. Talk about responsibility. More and you're always doing the best you can. Responsibility, well, I believe that you can be responsible pragmatically, uh, but fundamentally and ultimately, you know, at the end of your life, God can't judge a man whose will is not free, which is a huge uh, paradigm shift. Okay. Another way to understand what free will is like is what it's not. If we don't have free will, we're robots, we're puppets, we're automatons. If you want to see it religiously, in terms of God enough, we're, we're the, the will of God, the will of the universe. So if, if we're that's robots, good, like then that. we can't have free will. Conduit so, of God's will. Right, and that's a good way, because some people, some people say free will is like, if we're willing what we want to will. That's not free will. Well, you can will what you want, but you can't choose what you want to will. Exactly, that's the thing. <laughs> you can desire what you desire, but you can't choose what you or, desire. You or, can prefer what you prefer, you can't choose your preferences. Right, or some people so you say... You can love what you love, but you can't choose what you love. Right, right. You some people that, say yeah. we have free will because <clears throat> it's us doing it. That's another, like, compatibilist nonsense definition. That's not what this is about. You know? Well, who else could be doing it, with or without free will? We're doing it, so... All right. All right, let's let now. Um, so like now, why is this whole effort that we initiated like so Actually, important? Actually, just, just say one thing. Some people like to call our show and say they have free will because they make choices. Can you please put that to bed once and for all, just because you make choices? Right. This isn't about choices. This is about whether the choices are free of stuff that we can't control. That's another way of understanding this. Like, you know, if we can't control what's making us do what we do, obviously we don't have a free will. You know? And computers make choices, animals make choices, robots make choices. And technically, most technically, you know, this is about causality. You know, we'll explain this later. But if, if cause and effect is like if stuff that happened before yeah. we were born in a cause and effect matter is, is making us do whatever we're doing now, we don't technically have choices. You know, we're actually just like manifesting right. the, the, the choice that the universe made. Okay, so you got that. Okay, we got that trick. Because a lot of people tell me they make choices that have free will. Okay. Okay, let's go. so, uh, all right, so let's, um, so again, the, the reason this is like so important. Yes. Um, well, it touches everything we do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, you know, our world is completely insane. It couldn't be more insane. It's like, it's idolatry, you know. Yeah. It's idolatry because, I mean, I know Sam has, is, is an atheist, but this is like going to go to everyone. But like, the idea is like, God is the only being entity whatever that can do stuff you know and so like if we're saying we have a free will free of god's will free of everything you mean ideology like, or what do you mean by idol what word ideology? I idolatry is like, like ideology, making of ourselves gods it's, oh. it's as if we're like mini it's gods also a misguided ideology oh yeah I mean, yeah all right so like all it's right. more misguided than the nazis i mean it's just so misguided i mean historians like a hundred years from now are going to wonder what took us so long but you know, they can't blame us. The universe didn't present the, the, the illusion of free will until about, you know, 2009 or 2008, right, I when know. it first started, so. I know. All right, so again, like, this is really important because our entire world is completely deluded about the fundamental facts of who we are and why we do things. In other words, um, they think that stuff is up to us when absolutely nothing is up to us. And, all right, we're going to go into that because that's what Sam's, um, Sam's okay. book is about. All right, so let's see. Um, 
so okay well let's see yeah this again this this um segment may take more than one episode now let's explain how harris came about writing his book because like you know we you know harris has done let me tell you something you got to admire harris a lot because like you know after like telling people that you know there really isn't a god and we don't really need god for morality and stuff he's like challenging the system big time so after telling kind of like people in effect that there is no god he's telling people that we don't have a free will so like to me that is courage that is nobility and that is compassion because harris if you've ever seen him on, on youtube on one of his talks mm-hmm. it's about like he cares about animals he cares about the poor he wants to create a better world a more of uh, a compassionate world by properly understanding it okay so but explain explain like how we kind of like set in motion the events the causes that caused like harris to write his book because you know his book came out march 3rd 2012 we started doing this april 7th 2010 the show or your meetup well my meetup yeah yeah well, I don't have proof, but I mean, we did start a buzz. We, you, you started the buzz, I should say. You made the meetup and your TV show that we're on right now and also my TV show in Manhattan. And it all happened before the book. Uh, absolutely. So in other words, like the meetup... We started our uh, show September 2011. That came out March 2012. Right. So we can't not think that our buzz is, you know, there's right. more and more articles. There's cover stories in those two major magazines. What do they call American Scientists, A New Scientific American Mind or something? Yep, yep. Cover stories of uh, major magazines refuting free will, best-selling author that we're going to talk about. So the thing is really exploding. Right. It's a hot guess, topic. With the meetup, like it was, you know, uh, started April 7th, 2010. Now, it isn't like we generally get six, seven, eight people at our, at our meetup. So it's not about how many men. We got about 170 members now. It's not about the bigness of the meetup it's like that it's based in manhattan and i did that purposely i live here in white plains okay but this this show is actually being shown in manhattan too right so the reason i based it in midtown manhattan in the the, the sony plaza in, in the the, the um, madison avenue is because i know that like you know new york city has one point manhattan has 1.5 million people the new york metropolitan area that includes um, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, this whole area that's like pretty close to Manhattan, that's 22 million people. Mm. And, I, and I knew when I started this that, that a lot of people from Connecticut and New Jersey, you know, also come to meetups in Manhattan. So you've got the idea is like people scrolling, people scrolling meetup.com to find a, a group in Manhattan. It's not that they were going to join our group or they were going to like look into it in more detail. It's like every time they um, put a, a, a topic like philosophy or brain or even like friends and stuff, because this was like everywhere, they would see, you know, the, the, the name of the group, Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. Okay, explain how, like, so we did this show, and this goes, again, to White Plains, which White Plains is, like, a really community of choice for Manhattan. A lot of the, like, movers and shakers in Manhattan live around here. Actually, Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg, was actually Community um, of causal chain here. choice, not free yeah. choice. Now, now, <laughs> now with, with your show, with yes. your show, I mean, you, you produce a show in Manhattan, yes. live show. Explain the... We're live every other week, how, and our fans now know. Right, so explain how, you know, it's not just about the show. It's about, like, being listed on, you know, on the Time Warner Guide. Well, we met at the meetup, and then we, you know, I decided to do the show, or the universe compelled me to do the show, and then we got our name in that little rectangular box on Time Warner. RCN and Verizon don't have it if you're watching, but anytime anybody scrolls the channel guide at around 10.30 to 11 o'clock at night, they're going to see no free will in that little box, and whether or not they click on it or not, it's got to have some sort of impact. Exactly. They, they see it. Exactly. In other words, what, what we're it's trying like to... like priming the subconscious. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, in other words, what we're trying to do with, the, with this show, with the meetup, with, uh, with the Nell show, is to create a buzz about this. And then the word The buzz got, is out. Word got around to, to Sam, and, and, you know, he said, hey, it's time to write this book. And what about that list of articles you have? From 2003 to 2009, there were like 20 articles, and last year alone there were 20? No, I know, I know. So this thing is... And, and the amount of books on the market now, there's like 20 to 30 books... All right, but the other yeah, thing let's is like discuss his book though. With what, top, yeah. yeah, our our aim was like our first aim was to get somebody like Sam Harris, Malcolm Gladwell to write the book, and like Sam Harris did it. I mean, you know, so that's why you know he's a three-time New York Times bestseller. It's out there. Okay, um, so okay, uh, let's see. So let's get into the book. Okay, he. Um, all right, it's a concise book. You want to go chapter by chapter, or what do you want to do? Uh, I've got, like, some okay. notes on, like, I'm going to read some stuff, and I'm going to, like, make some statements about it. All right. 
three-time best-selling of it, you know, 83 pages, and he basically... It's more of an argument than a book. Yeah, but it's, okay. it's concise and it's know, readable. Right. People aren't intimidated by it. All right, he goes into causality, why causality makes free will impossible. He goes into the randomness, why randomness free, makes free will impossible. He also goes into the unconscious. Doesn't he start with a murder? Yeah, let's talk about yeah. that. He starts this very unfortunately. Sam Harris, <laughs> if you were like, you're a neuroscientist, you know, that, that's wonderful, you know, PhD and stuff, but if you were a psychologist, you would understood that the way you started the book, it just makes it very, very difficult to then for people to accept your thesis. You, you want to explain why? Well, I don't, I, I, I'm assuming the murder at the beginning, he's kind of saying that the guy was a product of his environment, right, and his genetics. Right. He, he, well, I just breeze through it. I mean, I, the idea is that's like, got to be what it is. Right, but the idea is like he starts out with like, these criminals breaking into house, yeah, raping and killing. Yeah, he okay, does. <laughs> three, four pages on this. I, I skimmed it. Let me tell you, I don't like that stuff in my mind. But if you start with that, and then you try to tell the reader that that you know we should excuse this person because they don't have a free will, because that's what people will think. You're setting yourself up like emotionally to have these people reject your thesis because of this horrible thing that you want them to accept. I think he's saying that you still have to put them away and they're dangerous. You just can't hate them because they couldn't help themselves. I'm no, not sure, but you're right. It's not the best way. Because people don't like to say, oh, we don't have free will and people can just do whatever they want. They don't like, yeah, people don't like right. that. You're right. That's the thing. You know, basically, when you start a book about free will, you, you want to, like, have a person, you know, the reader feel comfortable with it. And I'm not sure I did it so much in, in no, my book. You should book. define it clearly and say why it's historically imp so important, how it touches everything we do. And how, how it's so wrong to have it, you know, everybody's deluded or eluded by it and, and how that causes more pain and suffering. Right. Set right. it up so, like, why it's so wonderful to, to not believe in free will. Exactly. Set it up from the positive. Okay. Right. All right. So, and, and another thing is that he's not really very optimistic about this. And, like, if you want to present this to convince people, you know, you got to be optimistic. On, on page one, he says, uh, where is it? Hold on. Uh, this book is hard to like leaf through because it's so small and it's got like these flaps. <laughs> All right, but again, it's a landmark. It's a milestone. This like book is historical. It really is. Okay, he says, if the scientific community were to declare free will an illusion, it would precipitate a cultural war far more belligerent than the one that has been waged on the subject of evolution. I mean. Yes, he's that, probably true. It's probably true. In fact, we might have two, uni two different United States of America. We might have the free will believing states and the non-free will. It might be, get, you know, to that degree. People who don't believe in free will won't want to live with the people. I mean, it's such a big topic. All right, one thing, two things. Like, it's like red states and blue again, states. If it is true, I mean, that's another reason. If, if, if you know, you want to, free will, trying to, like, disprove free will, it's like revolution. It's trying to, like, get people to think that the world is different than the way it is. And if you're going to do that, you want to, like, try to make it as palatable as you can. Because, like, I mean, he didn't have to say it would precipitate. I mean, he doesn't know, right? I mean, it, 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 it may. Might, uh, yeah. yeah, it might probably. Well, he doesn't have the luxury of, like, Christopher Columbus when they said, oh, the world's not flat. You know, I just traveled around it. I went around. I mean, there's, there's no physical way to, you know, he has to just argue it. Right, right. So we're all at disadvantage. At, like, those of us who don't believe in free will, we just have to talk people out of it. Uh, other people who thought, the, you know, the sun was in the, the earth was the, sun of the center of the solar system and, you know, the, the sun went around the earth, they can prove that with math and science, that we actually go around the sun. Right. But this, you can't really, you just have to have logic, and common sense. Exactly. Which to us is secondary, you know, second exactly. nature. And again, like... But other people, they just don't get it for some reason. Right, well, what happens is, like, you know, when you explain, explain things with kind of, like, negative connotations, with negativity, a lot of times their emotions are going to kick in. They'll tune out right on that. Yeah. That's the thing. So, like, you know, this is a very delicate subject. Sam, Sam, yeah. I want you to write another, another book on this, because, I mean, you're a, a, an amazing author, three times New York Times bestseller. I know you put this out here because it's so important for the world to know, but it's 83 pages. Pages. I mean, next book, I want you to write 250 pages. I want you to, like, seal the deal on this, all right? Because all right. Cause here's another thing he says. Right after that, he says, without free will, sinners and criminals would be nothing that more than poorly calibrated clockwork and any conception of justice that emphasized punishing them rather than deterring, rehabilitating, or merely containing them would appear utterly incongruous. He's right. I like He's that. right. But people don't want to hear that. People don't want to hear, without free will, we're, we're just going to like, you know, we, people like, you know what I'm saying? 
He's right, though. I mean, that's what the, he is right. they still have to go to jail, but you just can't hate them and put devil's pitchforks in a red. You can't put them in, in hell for eternity because they're nothing but poor. What do you say? Poorly programmed? Poorly calibrated He's clockwork. He's right. Well, they're genetics, too. It's not just conditioning. It's both. Right. But again, like, if you want to, like, psychologically convince people there's no free will, this is like page one. You don't want to start I with I would the start with what are the benefits things. of not, you know, first I would define free will, then I would refute it, and then say what, why the world would be much better without it. You don't blame yourself. You know, you don't hate yourself. That's the number one thing. I mean, if you make a mistake, you just did the best you could at that time. Absolutely. So you forgive all the stupid mistakes you made in your Absolutely. past. Absolutely. And everything's God's will. There's nothing you can do. I mean. All right. So, like, yeah. you know, so he sets it up so, like, you know, you know, if we don't have free will, we're going to have to, like, you know, we can't punish criminals in a sense like that. And then he goes on, like, to the other part. He goes. Wait, wait he doesn't say you can't punish them. Well, he says, like, um, would, it would appear utterly You have to rehabilitate them. He's saying you still have to send no, him away. No, he said, like, without free will, yeah. sinners and criminals would be nothing more than poorly calibrated that. clockwork and any conception of justice that emphasized punishing them. So, like... Don't he's, emphasize he, punishing. Right, he's emphasize saying, rehabilitation, right? Right. So he said any, any <laughs> conception of justice that emphasized punishing them would be incongruous. So, like, he's right, but in other words, like... Most people think, well, we have to punish because punishment is a, de a deterrent and stuff. And he goes into that. But again, it, it's like psychologically kind of like sets up the idea that we got to like kind of like we can't address the criminals. We can't like hold them responsible. He's right. But again, at the very beginning of the book, I'm not sure that's the best way to sell it. OK. Well, if someone makes, does a crime without free will, they still have to go to jail. They still have to like punish them, but you don't have to send them to hell. Exactly. So, you, they, you know, well. The, the deterrent should not be hell. It should be you're going to be in this tiny little cell for 20 years with terrible food, no fresh air. You, and, you know, commit all the crimes you want, but you're still going to jail. We're gonna, we're not going to hate you, but we're going to fear right. you. And actually, a lot of times, like a lot of times, if it was about compassion, about fairness and stuff, maybe a person might get a 10-year sentence. But well, the criminal shouldn't feel so terrible about themselves. I know, but the, mm. the, stigmatized with, with the free will illusion that we're blaming them, yeah. they did it. That's then that good. 10 years is going to become 20 years, so we feel better because, like, they did something bad and they deserve to, to punish because they did it. Right. Okay, so, like, again, the, the free will, you know, being shown to be illusion, would it'd, be crea it'd create a lot more compassion. Okay. Okay. Nine and a half, ten then, minutes. Then he goes into, um, this, this will probably be three episodes. Go ahead. Okay, whatever. Right. Whatever the universe decides. Anyway. All right, okay. Then he goes, like, so he, he goes with the, the, the blame. Now he goes to the credit. And those of us who work hard and follow the rules would not, quote unquote, deserve our success in any deep sense. First, you're right, Sam, but like, again, like, people want to, like, you know. Does Sam Harris give all the money back that he makes from that book? No, I know. And, 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 and I, I mean, I, we don't know. I don't know him. Uh, no, and the other thing is, like, we want credit for doing this. We you want do. credit I don't, for I'm not really that addicted to that. I, I can see that I no. really can't take credit, but I, in a way, I, I think there's a market rate for what I'm doing. Right. In other words, like, the, way, the way the, the world is structured now, you know, we did some major things. Sam Harris, this, this is a historical book. He's you making know. a ton of money on it because any time anyone Googles free will, his book pops up right. first. So, it's got the right title. So the way this world is structured now... Then yeah, we we receive credit, you know. For but read that line again. Those who work hard and follow do, do not deserve the rewards. Yeah, he's telling people that like <clears throat> that when you do something um, good, and he's right, you don't quote unquote deserve the the rewards for it, right? And he's right, but like and and but the thing so is, you're like, telling me Sam Harris lives in a ghetto and never goes on nice vacations with his family with nice meals. I mean, he takes the credit and the rewards. Absolutely, because well, like, don't you have a problem with that statement then? If he's saying that. Well, again, I think he's he's addressing the world as as it is. It's the same way we do, you know. Like he's trying to make money off telling people not to take credit for things they do. He's he's taking full credit. That's why I didn't like to use my name for. I mean, All right, whatever. Know. The other thing oh, that he well, says that's a bit confusing, Sam. When you're explaining something as complicated as this, you got to use very technical, precise language. When you say like. You know, you wouldn't deserve our our success in any deep sense. I think what by deep sense, what's that mean? Deep sense. What he really means is is in any accurate, technical, precise, you know, sense. All right, deep. You know, that's a metaphor. That's that's confusing. All right, you got it. You got to be um, clear on this. Mm -hmm. All right. So what else? Um, Just look through the book and talk about it. No, know. I know, I know. Um, okay, so let's see. Page five. Um, Oh, God, we're only up to page five? I know, I know. This may be four episodes. Yeah. That's all right. Okay, what's he say on page five? 
So after his crime description, you know, he begins, he brings very strong and unequivocal. This is excellent. He goes, free will is an illusion. Our wills are simply not of our own making. Thoughts and intentions emerge from background causes of which we are unaware and over which we exert no conscious control. We do not, do not have the freedom we think we have. Amen. All right. Then That's he says, right. free will is actually more of an illusion. Then, oh, wait a minute. Um, I don't even think it's an illusion. I'm beginning to think it's so obvious that there's no free will. An illusion is trying to trick you like a magician. It's an illusion. Right, right. He it, goes into I, that. I, this isn't tricking anybody anymore. I mean, it's like the free will obvious. Right. The no free will obvious. Actually, I want he, he starts a strong, you know, it's a strong start. I just wanted to read the strong start in my book. Because, like, I, you know, this is the book I published. Uh, wow, I knew this was going to be somewhere. December 20... <laughs> When it was December second, two thousand eleven, you know, about four or five months before his came out, and I start equally strong. I, I, I you know, the, the very first words, for we who appreciate appreciate speedily arriving at the heart of a matter. Here's how to disprove any free will argument in two easy steps. One, ask the free will believer to give an example of a choice they consider to be freely willed. Two, ask the free will believer to say whether or not the choice was caused. That's it. You can apply this to every... I mean, I don't say that, but, you know, you can apply this to every argument. Yeah, you had a cause for writing that. Right. So then, then I say, congratulations, you've just succeeded. If the free will believer says the choice was caused, the ensuing causal regression makes free will impossible. If the free will believer says the choice was uncaused, that would mean the choice was random. Random thoughts are clearly not what we mean when we refer to a choice as freely willed. You can easily apply this two-step refutation to any and all free will arguments. That's the key. You know, it doesn't matter what people say is the theory behind why they say they have a free will. You simply ask them, all right, give me an example of a choice. It's either causal or, or random. Okay, so anyway, what I'm saying is, like, if you want to start, you know, because, like, there are only a few books out on this. I mean, and now you just wrote an excellent book on this. Oh, thank you. So, like, if you're going to, yeah, so if you're going to write a book on this. Well, it's actually a shorter version of the first book. Start right? strong, absolutely. Yeah. Start strong and clear. Okay. So then, all right, so he starts strong, and then he goes on to explain um, Lebet's experiment. Do you know the, the Lebet's experiment? He, um, Sounds vaguely familiar. What is it again? All right. The idea is like this is how like back in the early 80s, this is what kind of like got people somewhat interested in the topic, at least in science, in, very, in, in modern times. Uh, Benjamin Libet, he like hooked up people to an electroencephalogram for their brain waves, an electromyogram to, to measure muscle activity. He asked them to like flip well, yeah, a I, finger. I do know this. Yep. The seven-second right. delay, is that this? Right, except yeah, okay. like with this experiment, yeah. it was only about, I think, uh, 300 milliseconds or so. I explained it to the people. Yeah. So, yeah, so they've got this clock with, a, with numbers like going out pretty quickly. The, the subject in the study is supposed to, you know, notice the number on the clock. At the price, precise moment, they decide consciously to flick their finger, okay? So what happens is like the, the researchers, the experimenters could actually – gauge through their electromyogram, the muscle activity, that the muscle activity, the brain activity to initiate the muscle activity actually preceded the Didn't the you subjects. once tell me it was seven seconds? Where'd you get seven seconds? Well, here's the way thing. too long. I was going to say that. No, no, no. Here's the thing. This was like using an EEG. Now they use functional MRIs, and they can actually determine between seven and, and ten seconds before a, a person knows that he's made the choice that the person has made in the choice and that's an, another thing i was going to say like harris i mean like i i did i should have done this in my book um harris didn't go into the, the recent research which is much more you know convincing so again if you're going to write a book on this you know seven to ten seconds before we decide anything you know um it's already been decided mm -hmm. Ex explain what you know so that that makes free will impossible how can you yeah Okay. Because you're having uh, chemical reactions in your brain that you're not even aware of, and then once you're aware of it, the, the decision's already made, and you're unconscious. There's a delay, right? Right. So right. they hooked them up, and they could see that even before you're aware, picking left or right, your your brain chemistry changed. Exactly. Or whatever. Exactly. Electromagnetic fields, whatever the hell you're right. talking about. Right. If a researcher can tell seven to ten seconds what you decided before you know, obviously you, you, it's not freely willed. It's not right. consciously exactly. willed. Right. Exactly. Okay. But that's not in Sam Harris's book. I thought we were talking about Sam Harris's book. No, no, he, right. he explains oh, it. Oh, does he have that? Yeah, he yeah. definitely explains that. Okay, and um, one last point. I don't want to get to it, it now because, like, I want to, like, go more into it in more detail. But um, we're going to end this, like, 
Let's do some commercials. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because this is going to be part one, I think, of three. It may be four or five. Who knows? Because, all right. Uh, talk about your show in Manhattan. Commercials? Yeah. For my show? Yeah. Well, they're already watching it. Every other week we're live. It's the biggest thing ever. He started, but live is better because we're not afraid to discuss and confront with the people. You know, we want to take the phone calls and... We really want people who believe in free will to call, but we're, it's getting less and less for some reason. We're getting more people, but we want to hear why people, if you're watching this next week when we're live, actually in the winter we might be every three or four weeks because it's too cold anyway, but we want to know why you believe you have a free will and really think about you know, why you believe you have free will. And then I'm going to tell you that was a conditioned response and you're going to have to answer that. All right, again, it's like... But I want to talk about it's the biggest thing ever. I mean, nothing this big, I mean, this touches every aspect of your life of being a human being. From dating, from crime and punishment, from school, and who gets money and who doesn't, and I mean, how you punish people and how you feel about um, the guy, uh, Sandersky, who raped boys in Penn State, supposedly or allegedly. You know, if he couldn't help himself, he's not such a monster. He's just poorly calibrated clockwork. Yeah. And uh, yes, he should be put away, but you can't stigmatize, stigmatize him as an evil monster. Yeah. It's wrong. It's, it's just wrong. It's really wrong. It's really wrong. That's. And that brings the whole question of heaven or hell into debate because if there's no free will, you're either predetermined to go to heaven or hell or there is no heaven or hell. God cannot judge a man's will who, which is not free, so it has huge implications. Think about this. But in practical life, you probably should act if and act the same, but deep down know that nobody has a free will. Absolutely. And again, like churches... So obvious. I know, it How is How else obvious. can you explain why people in different countries have different languages and different dialects and different regions and different religions based on geography? I mean, come on. I know, and the, the big question is... How like, you were raised, culture, come on. How do our, like, the, the, the PhDs around the world, the doctors... Get this how wrong. How do they not get this? This is so simple. Again, this is a milestone. Sam Harris's book, Free Will. We're going to continue to explore it in the next episode. Uh, one more... Okay, so an L show is, like, every Wednesday, 11 o'clock, MNN Channel 56, Time Warner... No, MNN 2. Okay, and, like, mm. our meetup, like... RCN, I don't know the channel and files, every, but it's MNN 2. First Saturday of the month in Manhattan, the Sony Building, 550 Madison Avenue. Okay, join us through Meetup. Can we watch this show on White Plains on the Internet? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Whiteplains.org. MNN.org, Channel 2. Yeah. Yeah. And you can watch them, uh, your show also live. All right, bye bye. So, <laughs> see you next time.